What's up everybody, Trip Smith here and in this video we're talking about paddle boards. Right behind me, I have three different paddle boards. They're all at different tiers, different quality levels, different price tags. There's a lot of things that make these boards different that people don't know about or realize and whenever they read them or learn about them on a website, they don't understand the differences and why they should consider different differences. So in this video, we're gonna be going over those differences and what you should be considering whenever you purchase your paddle board. When you wanna decide how much you wanna spend, you know, how you're gonna use your board. So buckle up because I'm gonna be sharing a lot of information with you guys. I'm gonna do it quick, concise, at least as best as I can. And hopefully you'll be able to make a good educated decision when you go to buy an inflatable paddle board. Now to give you a little context here, all these boards are manufactured by the same company, iRocker. We have their 11 foot 6 inch nautical board, we have their 11 foot all around iRocker board, and we have their Blackfin XL which is 11 foot 6. Now I value your time, so I'm going to go ahead and give you the Cliff Notes version for all those who may be interested. Now the bottom line is, for most people I believe the iRocker all around board is going to be the best bang for your buck. Uh, and it's going to check all the boxes or check, yeah, really it's going to check all the boxes for the vast majority of paddlers. Now, got my little cheat sheet here. Where are we at? Now at the time of this recording and without any sales going on, which iRocker does sales mm, periodically, there's actually one going right now. I think these boards like 150 bucks off or something like that. But right now, this iRocker board, the all around is at 895, okay? And that's their MSR, you know, or whatever. That's their retail price. The Blackfin XL comes in at $1,109, while our Nautical comes in at $569. For just your general paddling, maybe some overnight trips and things like that, you're gonna be just fine on the iRocker all around board. If you wanna throw some fishing and stuff into the game, uh, you may want to go with a black fin, or actually you probably will want to go with a black fin. Well, if you don't mind paying a little bit extra for some extra amenities, uh, for fishing specific-ish, I don't know, that's just my interpretation of the product, the black fin will probably be your better option. Uh, and also if you're going to be doing some more hardcore touring and you want a longer board that moves quicker and more efficiently through the water with the same amount of paddling effort, you're going to want to go with a black fin. That's going to be the black fin model V. Now the nautical board is still a good board, but I think you're going to be much better off with the iRocker all around board or just one of the iRocker series boards, whichever one fits you the best, but probably the all around really because it really is an all around board. Yeah, I really don't see much need to go to the other ones. But of course, it's just my personal opinion. Who would I recommend the nautical to? Uh, maybe kids. And the only reason that I say that is because they have a 10 foot six version. It only weighs 20 pounds and it's very affordable. So it would be great for kids. Now for most adults, I'm probably gonna say, okay, let's go ahead and step you up to the iRocker. This is probably where you need to start your inflatable paddleboard, you know, times and experiences with this board. Now, if you're wondering, man, all those price differences, uh, why would you just suggest that one over this one, even though this one's a little shorter and all this other stuff? Well, if you want to get into all the details, stick around in the video because that's what I'm about to be going over because the last couple of days I've been learning a lot and I'm about to share it all with you guys to give you guys some value to let y'all make the best, most informed purchase whenever you buy your inflatable paddle board. All right, let's get on with it. Okay, now we're going to get into the nitty gritty. Here I've got some data that I've kind of collected myself. Some of it I got off the website. Some of it I learned. They have most of the differences listed on the website, but I actually I found a couple differences that aren't listed on the website. And here I have each different make and model of each board with the size, the length, and the width, and the weight, and also the price of them. I'm using all this information along with uh, how I touch and feel and just kind of go over these boards uh, to make my best judgment and to share with you guys the differences so you can make your best decision. I'm going to start by going over the gear and equipment that comes with the boards, like the paddle and the pump and the bag, because that's pretty important stuff. Then we're going to go on to like board construction, how it's built, which I think is a very important aspect in your choice. Uh, and then we're going to go on to features and stuff that are on the boards. What's next after that? Then we're going to go over why you should be considering some of those features and why maybe you shouldn't consider those features depending on your use and then just which one gives you the best bang for the buck and why in a more detailed reason. All right, we're gonna start out with these bags. I'm just looking at them. You may not see many differences, but boy, are you wrong. Now there's obvious differences between this bag, the nautical bag and the iRocker and the Blackfin bag, but there's even a lot of differences that you wouldn't know about these bags. You especially wouldn't know it by looking on the website because they just don't list all these little minute differences that can make a difference to someone's purchase. All right, let's start with the nautical. Now, granted, the board's not in here, 
So, you know, the bags, you know, doesn't hold its shape very well. But, okay, you've got your standard bag, blah, blah, blah. It's got backpack, waist strap, right? It opens up. It has one external pocket on it. Actually, well, one here on the front goes up and it goes down all the way. That's pretty big, actually. Then all of the bags have these side mesh pockets with a small side zipper pocket for uh, small odds and ends. In my testing and learning about these products, I, I did unpack the boards from the bags, pack them all back in the bags, all the gear that comes with it packed in the bags. I tried on the bags, I moved around with the bags, you know, so I really try to get a good feel of them. You know, I've inspected them pretty good, I feel, and I think by some things I pick out, you guys will think I inspect them pretty well as well. So this bag will work. Nothing wrong with it. All right, now step up to the iRocker bag. One of the big things that are improved from the Nautilus to the iRocker is you get wheels, right? Very nice. You know, once you load this thing, it is pretty rigid. You can just roll it around if you're going through an airport or going up to your hotel room or going down to the beach or whatever, eh, you may want to do that. Uh, but you got wheels on it, okay? You also have a little bit more of a beefier material, a little bit better zippers. Uh, you have some more straps kind of to cinch things down. Uh, I don't know, I, I would say the main difference though is the wheels and you get a little bit better construction in your bag. I still have this black fin bag. Now, it has wheels too, okay? That's the great thing about that. But even the wheels are different from bag to bag. You actually have a little bit fatter wheels on the black fin bag. It's not a major difference, but it is a difference, okay? Now, something else that I just, just realized as I was getting these out is these actually have different material that they're made out of. I thought they were the same. You know, like the side materials, the front material. No, the materials on the black fin bag it's thicker, it's more durable. And then like the zippers are a little bit better. You know, you have something uh, along the zippers, like a little plastic, uh, I don't know, like a bougie. If you're a paramedic, you know what a bougie is, but like a little plastic rod, I guess. It kind of helps it hold its structure. Uh, and you've got that on the front and the back. See how this is kind of holding its shape? Well, look at this. You know, this doesn't really want to hold its shape, right? No. Okay, this bag is holding its shape, especially in the corners and stuff. The buckles actually go uh, on the outside or around the zipper if you want to cinch it down, while these, you're actually putting stress on the zippers. Granted, that's not really a big deal, but just something to consider. You have a little bit bigger straps on your shoulder straps on this bag. Uh, but one really cool thing that I like about this bag is this front pocket on it, it's actually larger than the bag and it protrudes out from the bag. So you have a lot of space in here. I was actually able to put my iRocker electric pump in this front pouch with plenty extra room to spare while I still had the paddle, the manual pump, and the board and stuff inside the bag. There's really a lot of room in these bags, especially if you manually deflate your board which means suck the air out of it before you deflate it or before you roll it up i'm sorry and then if you roll it up correctly uh, it, it fits in there really really well so blackfin has a bit better bag uh, but you know i don't know how much you're going to use your bag some people may not use their bag much at all i don't use my bags much at all really so that's not really a big selling point to me but it might be to you it may not be to you all right let's take a look at pumps all right i'm gonna try to make this short and sweep you guys Basically, this is a more of a generic pump you're gonna get with a cheaper board, hence the more affordable nautical. Uh, these both pumps are identical, except for the color and stickering, but other than that, they're both really, really good pumps. Difference in these pumps is you have, kinda like gears, like on a bicycle. You have two gears on this pump, you know, low and high. On this pump, you have three gears, uh, low, medium, and high, right? So. You use your selector switch to select that as you're pumping the board up. Now, if you're just gonna forego the manual pump and buy an electric pump, like I probably would suggest, <laughs> or just keep your board inflated all the time, like I do a lot of times, uh, this may not be a big deal to you, but for the rare times that you may be pumping your board up manually, it's nice to have a good pump, okay? Short and sweet, perfect. Battles, this is an important one, you guys. You need to pay attention to this one, okay? Now on the website, you may only think there's a difference in the nautical paddle and the iRocker and the Blackfin paddles are both the same. Well, they're pretty close, but they're not exactly the same, all right? First, we'll go with the nautical paddle, and I think one of the most important things to think about is the blade and the stiffness of the blade. Now, they're all nylon blades, right? 
And the website states they're all nylon blades. Well, they're not all the same nylon blades. The nautical blade is a little bit cheaper than that of the eye rocker and the black fin, which are both identical. So if you can see, I can actually, let's see here. I'm actually able, without too much pressure, I can bend this blade a pretty decent amount, right? Especially if I get up here and boop, see there? I can, I, I can, I can bend that thing pretty darn good. And you can see the paddle, the shaft is staying pretty stable behind me, right? It's a bit of a thin blade, right? All right, now we take the eye rocker paddle. We take a look at this blade. It's a little bit thicker and it's a little bit stiffer. Granted, I can still flex it some, but it's a little stiffer. As you're making your strokes through the water, that's gonna help you not waste the effort and the hard work that you're putting into paddling your board through the water. It's not gonna leave it wasted. It's gonna actually propel you in the direction you wanna go more so than the other paddle, okay? So that's, that's a pretty important thing. Next up with both the eye rocker and the blackfin paddles, you get a good carbon shaft. That's gonna make the paddle lighter and maybe a little bit stiffer or give it a little more flex, which you kind of want a little bit of flex whenever you're paddling, so it's like a little springy action in your paddle. But carbon is just a better material for your paddle shaft. Now, something they don't talk about is the handle. Oh, let's flip these around. If you pay attention to these handles, they're both not the same. This is a plastic handle. This is a carbon handle. Now, both of them are separate pieces from the shaft, so they're glued on there. This one actually is riveted on. This one looks like it's glued on with a piece of heat shrink or something like that around it. Now, I've actually, I've had one of these paddle handles break on me. Now, it's actually the same handle that's on the nautical paddle is on the eye rocker paddle. Then when you step up to the black fin paddle, you get a better carbon handle, which is a good thing. Really and truly, I wouldn't necessarily let the paddle be a deal breaker with any board that you choose because, you know, most all brands are not giving the most expensive and the best paddle with their paddle board. Because they're trying to keep the prices low to keep them competitive, so they're not putting a, you know, an expensive paddle in there. But if I can make a suggestion to you, I'd say buy your board and then buy a paddle. Maybe you spend 100 bucks, 120 bucks, or even 80 bucks on a paddle, and you're probably gonna be able to get something better than most any paddle that's gonna come with a paddle board. All right, now let's get into the good stuff. This is what I think is the most important factor, and that's the construction of the boards. How is it made, or more specifically, how many layers of material is protecting your board from being punctured by a rock, a dock, or a strap, or something or another, puncturing your board and putting a hole in it, which it can happen. Granted, these boards are super tough, super durable. I put them through all kinds of stuff before. Uh, you guys have seen, I put my Blackfin XL that I've had for a few years right out there in my shop. I put it through the ringer, baby, and she's, she's still running like a champ. But what is the difference in these boards in the construction? Well, this nautical board is a double layer construction, meaning it has two main layers of material that are keeping the air in and you know, <laughs> you're just kind of making your board your board, right? Now, both the eye rocker and the black fin, they're both triple layer construction. Now, is this a big deal? I don't know. I think so. Now, previous to me getting these boards, I never really noticed the difference between a single layer, no, a double layer board and a triple layer board. Granted, I think I have some, because I, before I got these three boards, I owned uh, five paddle boards, five, five, four, five inflatable paddle boards. Yes, uh, so now I have eight. <laughs> but I never really you know, sat down and felt the difference in those boards, specifically when they're deflated. So earlier today, I had all these boards deflated and I was feeling them and trying to fold them and you know just feeling the difference in the thickness and just the overall feel and durability feeling, because that's all I was doing was feeling. And I will say the triple layer feels substantially thicker than the double layer. So that is a good thing. And it doesn't add much weight to the board. Uh, if anything, it's, just, it's gonna add some rigidity and it's gonna add some protection from punctures or anything. And I know some people are concerned about weight, right? They're thinking, well, Trip, how much weight does that extra layer add to the board? Well, this nautical over here is 11 foot six, all right? It's 32 inches wide. It weighs 22 pounds. The all around is 11 foot, 32 inches wide. It weighs 26 pounds. So it added four pounds to the board, four pounds. That's not very much. You're still paddling a 26 pound something. That's much better than a 70 pound kayak, right? Now, since we are talking about weight, let's go ahead and talk about the weight of this Blackfin over here. Blackfin XL is 29 pounds. So 29 pounds, 26 pounds, 22 pounds. So you're thinking, okay, well, where does the extra weight come from 
on this black fin. Well, that's in the accessories and things on the black fin that we're about to go over right now. So really and truly, for the way that I use a board, the nautical comes with pretty much all the accessories that are optional on these boards that I would ever need, really and truly. Because the most important things to me are bungees, front and back, plenty of D-rings, which it has enough. Granted, the iRocker and the nautical both have more D-rings, but I think there's probably enough on here to make do. But a couple of the differences in the iRocker and the nautical is you have these action mounts up here. You can screw different mounts and stuff to it, whether it be a rod holder, a cup holder, a speaker mount, you know, a camera, whatever you want to attach there. Now, the nautical only has one right here. The iRocker, it has two, okay? Actually, actually, well, it has those two up there, and it has these two back here on the back, which, personally, I don't really see a need for uh, the way that I use the board. All right, since we're talking about the action mounts, then we go over here to the black fin. How many action mounts does this thing have? Action mounts. So you got one on the nautical, four on the eye rocker, then you have eight on the black fin. That's a lot of action mounts. Where are they at? You have two right up near the top, just like on the nautical. Then as you come down the board, you got a bunch of them, right? You got two here that make four, and you have these two here. In the grand scheme of things, I personally don't have a need for any of these back here. But now, people who may have a need for these, people who are gonna be fishing, they do have like a rod rack holder, you know, that can be mounted to the back here, or I don't know, some other stuff, I'm not really sh I don't know, I guess you could put a bunch of cup holders, bunch of speakers, something, I don't know, what you could do, but. <laughs> now I know there's some folks out there thinking, dang Trip, why are you hating on all the action mounts? Well, just because I personally don't have a need for them. And you know, especially some that are gonna be where I'm standing, or you know, if I hit something and I fall, or if I'm crawling onto the board, something like that, you know, I want this pad to be nice and soft everywhere. I don't want to be, you know, monking my knees up or my feet up or something, or tripping over these things. Uh, so I, I just don't need those on my pad. You know, sometimes when you're going down the river, you may be hitting rocks or something. You may be falling or something other. You may not have very good balance, or you may have been uh, engaging in some activities during the day that that interrupt your balance. I don't know what's going on, but <laughs> firstly. I think the less things on my pad, the better. Uh, and plus, you know, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to be attaching here. A lot of times, if I'm going to be attaching a bunch of stuff to my board, I'm just going to have a cooler here. Like, oh, where's that cooler at? Where's the cooler at? Where's the cooler at? Oh, there it is. Like that cooler right over there. I uh, rocker cooler that's like short and fat, which is perfect for a paddleboard. Um, I'm going to just have that strapped on here. And if I want a rod holder and stuff, I would rather have a rod holder that attaches to the cooler or a speaker mount that attaches to the cooler. So you know, what if I want to take the cooler off and set it on the beach or somewhere or whatever, it'll all go with my cooler. But if you are a fisherman or if you do like your gadgets, okay, you, you may want these. So let me know in the comments what you guys think about the action mounts because I would really love to know. Are you gonna use those? Tell me, because I, I, I think that's some valuable information there. Now there are a few other subtle differences. Like if you notice at the top of these handles, Okay, you have a handle on the bow, handle on the bow, both very important things you need to look for if you're looking at a paddleboard. That's you, you need that. Hit yeah, my family beautiful. <laughs> and then on the front of the black fin, they move the handle up to the front. That's an interesting thing. You know, I don't think that's a bad idea. Uh, I think it's kind of a good idea, especially uh, if the handle will stay up, because you know, if you bump into things, maybe that'll be like a little, you know, front bumper for your board, right? Now, one thing is the nautical does have a D-ring on the top there at the bow. The black fin and the nautical do not. Now, all of them have a D-ring underneath the bottom. So they all have that D-ring underneath the bottom, which is definitely handy. You know, you definitely want some sort of attachment point on the front of your board. Now, I will say that the nautical has a couple less D-rings. Boom, boom. You know, it's not quite as many. The iRocker has D-rings perfectly placed for strapping the cooler down. And the black fin, eh, maybe not so much. I think if I want a cooler, I want it right here. And I guess you could strap it with those, but this placement is just, to me, it looks like it's better for a cooler. But anyways, no big deal. You got all these other action mounts. You can, you can strap whatever you want down. <laughs> now, something that I think is very interesting, that's these handle materials. This is a great handle on this nautical board, on their cheapest board. Great, to me, a great, awesome handle. Now you step over here to the eye rocker and to the black fin and that just doesn't feel like quite as good as the handle to me i'm not i think i like the handle on the nautical better 
You know, it just, it just feels beefier and better and stronger to me. I don't know. I like it. I mean, you still get usable handles on all of them, but just personally, man, I like that. Now, another subtle difference that I haven't really figured out is, okay, you got a D-ring over here on your eye rocker. Okay, great. Normal D-ring. Here, you have a D-ring on your black fin. Okay, it's a normal D-ring, actually. That D-ring might, it might be a touch bigger. It is. So that's a little bit like uh, fatter of a D-ring, like the actual material of the D-ring is a little bit wider. Hmm, interesting, the diameter or whatever of that, whatever, the, the metal there. But then when you step up to the black fin, you also get these uh, fancy instructions. This is where your kayak seat mounting point is and where your uh, shoulder strap mounting point is. <laughs> now, I only bring that up jokingly because I mean, all of the boards can use the kayak seat and the shoulder strap. So, I don't know, I guess the black fin gets a little bit fancier and you get these little, I don't know, rubber stamps or whatever, rubber patches around your D-rings that tell you what they're for. Okay, cool, yeah, it adds a little bit of flair to the black fin, I guess, but not really necessary in my opinion. Now, when it comes to the bottom of the boards, they're all pretty much the same, right? They just have a little bit different design on them. All of them look pretty good to me. Now, when it comes to the fin boxes, they all have the same triple flip lock fin boxes. They're pretty good. They did used to have the US fin box, but for various reasons, they went with these and they seem to be just as reliable. Uh, I don't think there's gonna be any issue with these fin boxes really and truly, but they work well. One good thing about this fin box is there's no moving parts to lose like I've done in the past. And now I carry spare parts if I have a board with a US fin box because I've lost a little screw and stuff that goes in it and it's and it's actually it's actually pretty aggravating or it's not really aggravating but after using this that is so much easier to do than the other system we have to put your little nut down in there and get it in the right spot and put your fin on and put it in there and line it up and screw it down it's this is so much easier there there <laughs> come on <laughs> i like it another thing to talk about are the pads on here right these big foam pads now, of course, it's obvious that, you know, they're saving money with a nautical and it's not quite as nice and fancy as these pads. But something else to note is the nautical, I believe it has a little bit thinner pad. And I believe the eye rocker and the black fin have a little bit thicker pad. I mean, it's, 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 it's very minute, but still. But it also, you know, you've got a little print on these pads. You know, they just, they just look a little bit better. I mean, that works, but you know, they're making a budget board when they make that board. You're getting a little bit fancier when you go with these. Another really important one that a lot of people don't think about is the warranty. Yeah, there's different warranties on these boards. Here you get a one year board warranty, 90 day accessory warranty. Here you get a, what is it, goodness, two year board warranty, one year accessory warranty. Let's, let's double check to be sure I'm right. I should have looked at that. No, I'm right, yeah. So you get a better warranty when you step up to these boards and that's actually a substantially better warranty. And that's not only something to consider when you're buying an iRocker board, but any board you're buying, you need to consider the warranty. Can you even contact the company? <laughs> you know, because sometimes you may buy a board off Amazon or somewhere, some random website, and there's no contact information, or if there is, you need to call it and see if you get anybody, or something or another, or send an email. You know, try other ways to reach out. If you can't get anybody, yeah, there's a little hint there. <laughs> I wouldn't get that. Another difference with the black fin is if you're fishing, like I said, this is more of a, I would suggest this more to fishermen, but it has a little loop here on the side where you can actually put a little sand pole spear through. That's pretty handy, you know, if you're gonna be doing that. Another difference in the construction is the black fins, they all have a little carbon rail that go down the side. Now it only goes down about, what? <clears throat> two thirds, maybe three quarters of the board. And it's basically like a, what is that? A two and a half inch wide, strip of carbon material fabric that's eh, going down the board. Now that is good to provide extra abrasion resistance. Uh, maybe a little more rigidity, maybe, eh, maybe not. But that's just a little bit something extra with the black fin. Uh, is it a deal breaker? Is it a deal maker? Eh, I don't know. You already have the triple layer. Uh, I don't know. It is cool though, okay? That's just an extra perk if you wanna go with the black fin. I wouldn't make that influence your choice really and truly, as much as the other factors. So to wrap it up really quick, which board do I suggest to most people? Most paddlers need the iRocker all around board. If you're gonna be fishing and touring, 
uh, you may want to go with the black fin simply because they have the model v which is 12 and a half foot long they don't have those options with the nautical or the eye rocker boards and they have all the little gadgets if you want some gadgets on your board for fishing but just for general paddling enjoyment and even camping i think the eye rocker all-around board is going to be your best bet but it would be great if they would come out like a 12 foot six board you know because to get to a longer board you need to go up to the black fin but actually you can get a longer board in the nautical than you can in the eye rocker and a little bit longer board means a little bit easier to paddle right so i think that would be a good addition maybe 2021 20, 22 or 2022 <laughs> All right, folks, hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope I provided you all with some value. Uh, if you're interested in these boards, check out some of the links below. But even still, if you're not going to get an eye rocker, I hope the things I went over today kind of give you some things to think about when you're choosing your next inflatable powder board. All right, folks, take care of yourselves. Get out there and God bless. I'll see you all in the next video or adventure. <laughs> Love ya.